Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel and all things related to narcissism, all the things you want to know and a lot of things you actually don't. Um, I'm going to open today on something I want you to think about. You know, I want you to think about those of you, I imagine that's most of you, who've been through a narcissistic relationship. Do you ever find yourself sort of double and triple checking yourself almost to the point where you're like, did I lock the door? Did I, you know, did I turn off the heater? Did I turn off the, you know, turn off the heat curling iron to turn off the stove, like that kind of second guessy stuff. You know, give me a yes in the comments if that's the case with you. Not saying, not like full blown obsessive compulsive disorder, like you might be washing your hands or checking locks a lot. I mean like this sort of, you're sort of these nagging doubts in you that you're just like, did I do this? Did I do that? Like, let me, know, let us know in the comments. It'd be interesting to know that. But, and as always, before we go forward, please welcome to this channel. If you are not already a subscriber, would love to have you join us. But today what I'm going to take, take on is this very, the, the critical key dynamic of, nar of narcissistic abuse or narcissistic relationships of gaslighting, but what it does to us over time. So let's go from there. You know, gaslighting really, really fuels a chronic sense of uncertainty in all of us. Now, people who have experienced narcissistic relationships or narcissistic abuse do not trust themselves. It's probably one of the hallmark symptoms. People who've experienced narcissistic abuse are riddled with self-doubt, confusion, and constantly second guess themselves. You'll ask yourself like, you know, are, are you sure? Oh, maybe I was wrong about that. Let me double check. There's a lot of that kind of self-talk. Now, people who have been through narcissistic abuse will rarely stand their ground. And when someone questions them, even when the person questioning them is not a narcissist, the person who's been through narcissistic abuse will often go and Google things or double check things because they are unwilling to hold their position with conviction unless they've got facts backing them up, right? They always need to get that little extra information. It can get to the point where survivors feel as though they have sort of a low grade manifestation of the symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder. You know, doing things like double and triple checking locks, uh, questioning themselves 10 times, I don't know, about um, whether they remember to pack something like a toothbrush or their passport or something, and literally something going home and, and double checking. They might read a term paper 10 or 15 times before they submit it because they're concerned they didn't get it right. They may read the same sentence over and over again because of disruptions in concentration, or maybe I didn't understand it right. Another thing people who experience narcissistic abuse may do is keep asking reassurance from other people repeatedly. Did I do it right? Are you sure? How did I do? Can you let me know how I did? I'm not so sure I did so well. Now, another common pattern in survivors of narcissistic relationships and narcissistic abuse is actually, interestingly, perfectionism. And it's a perfectionism that's designed to soothe the survivor's anxiety, not even necessarily to look perfect to the world, maybe the way a narcissist does. A person who experiences narcissistic abuse will obsess over everything from getting a cake right, just right for the party they're going to, or choosing exactly the right gift for someone, or trying to keep their house perfectly clean and organized, or always being prepared for every kind of disaster and every kind of problem. The perfectionism becomes a way of managing the anxiety that arises from feeling confused and feeling full of self-doubt, right? Something you can control. The perfectionism becomes a tool or a defense in order to create order and a sense of mental control in an otherwise chaotic mind. You're like, look, at least I have alphabetized my laundry room. There's at least one part of your life that feels in control. Now, in the main culprit in all this sort of this sort of obsessive and compulsive behavior in people who've experienced narcissistic abuse is the chronic exposure to gaslighting. The core of gaslighting is to have your reality denied or manipulated. And that, and by everything, I mean, that means having your, your emotional state manipulated, 
people doubting whether or not you're hungry, uh, doubting whether you, where you put the keys, everything gets questioned. If a person was raised with a narcissistic parent, self-doubt becomes a way of life. Gaslighting is an indoctrination into self-doubt and the need to feel like you have to turn to someone else or many other someone else's to get reassurance because there's so much doubt you have in your own abilities because of your narcissistic parent or parents. To me, frankly, it is one of the worst legacies of narcissistic abuse and gaslighting because it brings such an inefficiency into a person's life if they're always second guessing themselves. It's a waste of time to triple check everything, to always go back and see if you change the lock because you doubt yourself in so many ways. Now, the bigger legacy of this is that you hold yourself back from bigger opportunities. Yes, it's a waste of time to read a paper a third time or fourth time or 10th time or triple check whether or not you put your keys back on the hook. But when the self-doubt extends into the realm of opportunity, that really is the tragedy. All of your second guessing means that you may not go for that really good job or you may not apply to that graduate school or apply for that promotion. Lifetime gaslighting leaves you thinking that you're overreaching if you try to advance yourself. You start telling yourself that you aren't smart enough or strong enough to go for it. You don't feel like you can handle it because those are the messages you've internalized from a lifetime of gaslighting. So you don't go for it and you stay in a job or a relationship or something that may even be a little lower than your ability because that easier job is comfortable. And when you spent years of your life being gaslighted, wanting to be comfortable in a job that you can do very easily, it actually makes sense. But sadly, that does mean restricting your potential. And we don't get to see all the gifts of people who hold themselves back. People who are chronically gaslighted internalize the background noise of doubt in their lives that is a constant, constant presence. People who've been gaslighted chronically are much more likely to say no to opportunities, more likely to assume that they are wrong, more likely to take the blame or the fall for something, even when they're not responsible. Because growing up, if they were scapegoated, they got used to doing that. For those of you who have experienced narcissistic relationships and narcissistic abuse, and you wonder if you actually though truly have the symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder, the full on disorder, such as checking behaviors, reassurance seeking, adhering to compulsive rituals and order, it is actually quite important that you do get a mental health consultation or speak with a mental health professional to rule out whether you have what would meet the true diagnostic criteria for OCD. Now, when we're talking about full on OCD, we're talking about symptoms that are intense and time consuming enough. But in many cases, for people who just find themselves plagued by self doubt in dozens and dozens of small ways, small ways like always double checking themselves, always asking other people because they don't trust their own memory, um, trying to do, for example, as much as they possibly can for other people or at work. You know, the person always goes that extra mile or 20 miles so they can feel more confident that they did everything, that they gave their all because otherwise they're concerned they won't be good enough or getting stuck in all the time wasting and all the perfectionism and you have also experienced the rigors of narcissistic abuse and narcissistic relationships. Recognize that some of these seemingly sorts of obsessive and compulsive patterns may also very well be a downstream effect of the gaslighting that happens in narcissistic abuse. The sad, really tragedy is the number of people who have had narcissistic, antagonistic, high conflict parents, 
partners, or anyone else in their lives where they were convinced of this idea, if I could just get it right, then it'll all be fine. And then people from these kinds of histories waste lifetimes trying to get it just right. It's not possible. Narcissists move the goalposts all the time. There is no such thing as enough. Their insecurity means nothing is ever enough. A narcissistic personality is a bottomless vessel with holes in the bottom. Not you, not anyone, not any experience is ever going to adequately fill them. And in the meantime, you are wasting time getting lost in the details. Obsessions that, that sort of those constant thoughts that like, for example, you forgot something, you missed something, you didn't do something right. And compulsive sorts of behaviors like constantly checking and doubting and seeking reassurance are actually all quite common patterns that are seen for a very long time over the years in people who have survived narcissistic abuse years after they even get out of the relationship and they can persist long long after the narcissist is out of your life let those imperfections happen in your life in small ways eh, sometimes don't make your bed stand your ground when you're pretty sure that you're right don't feel like you need to be all things to all people. I have to be, you know, to be very, very frank and, and personal with you of all the, I mean, I've, I've been, again, obviously I've been around the block on narcissistic relationships in my life in various realms at work and family and in, um, in uh, past, past close relationships. I have to tell you the gaslighting, it, that's my, it's actually probably my biggest issue. I often do ask for reassurance. I've, my, my team sometimes wants to uh, choke me like you did fine. It was right. I'll often doubt myself. I'm like, I thought I put it here and then I'll, and, and then I'll doubt myself. No, you didn't put it there. And I'll, I'll second guess what I said. And even when I know something really, really, really well, like really well, if somebody questions me, I'll immediately assume I'm wrong. Like this is a long, long legacy. I've actually been like this since I was a kid. And I, I, know, I understand why that is. So for me, it's the one thing I can't shake. And I've seen it come up over and over and over again in clients who will keep doubting themselves. I have to say that even as I have built out my professional presence, for me, it's almost like an act of defiance to believe in what I'm doing. Because most of them like, I missed that one thing in that video or I didn't write that one thing down and remember I always say surround yourself with good people I'm lucky I'm surrounded by good people like no you got it we were listening it's fine so those things help me but I'm telling you now that these legacies do leave a they, they stay with us they're like echoes that don't quite fade and instead of letting that stop us we can find little fixes and hacks in our world to help us get past those uncertainties and I have no doubt you can too so if any of you have these sorts of, you know, just like I do, I'm a lock checker and I am a passport, like thinking I'm a passport forgetter. I always think I've forgotten my passport and I never have. But if you have any of those quirks and you feel comfortable sharing them, I know sometimes your name are in the comments and you don't want to share it, drop it because I'm telling you now, I could probably 50% of the time when I'm driving to the airport, I will stop the car and have to go take apart my suitcase and bless the people who are like, oh my gosh, this is her little tradition, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because after a lifetime of gaslighting, self-doubt is my middle name. And I'd like it not to be yours. Okay, so thanks again for tuning in. Bye-bye.